Okay. Uh, there's some other solving in 2.1 that maybe, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, I'm a teacher, I should explain stuff to you, but I bet you could figure some of this stuff out yourself. Like this one, here's, this is a classic little problem. Um, <clears throat> A student made a student uh, made a, a 79, uh, a 82, a 94, and a 68 on four tests. Uh, what what do you have to make on the fifth test? Uh, what do I need <clears throat> on test five to uh, uh, to get an A or to get a B or to get a? What do you think about this student? This student might not be able to get an A. With those scores. Mm -hmm. So we could try, I don't know. <clears throat> and what do I need on test five to get an A? <clears throat> now, this would be a, where, uh, a simple class where there's no homework, there's no quizzes. These are, <laughs> your grade comes from these four tests. Well, no, this, your grade comes from these five tests. Um, so can you set up an equation? Can you think your way through this little word problem? It's very basic and classic. What would you do? Uh, what would you do? Well, don't worry, I'll tell you. I mean, you would try to get an average. I guess for an A, you want to average a 90. And so how do you average five things? You add them up and divide by five. So I think I need to add these things up. 79 plus 82 plus 94 plus 68 plus the fifth one that I don't know. I'm calling X. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to divide by five. And I want that to be a 90. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. yeah, that's what we're saying. So we've turned it into a little equation. It sort of was a little word problem. I think it was a nice common sense word problem, but I just helped you with it. Uh, <clears throat> if you add up those numbers, uh, thank you. You added up all those four numbers. What is that? 323, 323 plus X all over five equals 90. Okay, what would you do next, you guys? I'd multiply by five. I don't know about you, you don't have to. You can do, sometimes you can do algebra different ways, uh, but I would multiply by five. On the, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, it would cancel, but on the right-hand side, it would be this. You guys with me? Multiply by five, multiply by five, and then subtract the 323 and you got x. Um, and that's 127. So maybe this student can't get an A uh, unless there's a bunch of bonus points on the fifth test. Uh, right? What do I need to get an A? 127 out of 100. Uh, let's change it to a B. <laughs> and I'll just do it like this. If it's a B, this becomes an 80. Is that okay with you? This becomes an 80. Everything else remains the same. This becomes a, a 400. Is that right? And then this becomes a 77. A 77. So if he makes a 77, he's got a B. Maybe I could sort of tell you. Um, here's another word problem that I saw. <clears throat> I went out to a lake. I'm trying to find the population of, of fish in a lake. The population of fish in a lake. So I think what I did, so I, I think that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to just call that X for a second. I went out to that lake and I caught uh, 50 fish and tagged them. I tagged them all. So there's 50 fish tagged. And I put them back. And I, they're nice and healthy. So in that slate, there's 50 tagged fish. So then I went out a few weeks later or whatever, and I went fishing, and I caught um, <clears throat> I caught uh, 
12 fish and, <clears throat> and uh, four were tagged. So, is this making any sense to you? <laughs> There's a big lake with a bunch of fish. I don't know how many total fish. I do know that the total number of fish tagged is 50. I know that as I set that up. I went out there and tagged 50 fish. But then I went out there and got this random sample of 12 fish and found out four were tagged. From that, I guess you can find out the population of fish. And it's really, kind of a easy problem, although I might have presented it in a confusing way. You set up a proportion. You set up a proportion. Uh, let me see. The proportion in the entire population, the tagged fish over the entire population, the number tagged and the number of the entire population is a ratio. The number tagged to the entire population. And then on my little fishing sample, this was just a little sample where at the total population that I caught was 12, or the, and, and out of those, the, I mean, the population of my sample was 12, and out of those, four were tagged. So I should be able to solve for x. Set up a proportion, tagged fish to total fish, tagged fish to total fish. Set up a proportion, and now I can solve for x. You guys okay? <clears throat> That's one way to do it. Uh, anyway, I saw this in the homework, so I have to share it with you. That's 4x equals 600. Divide by 4, and x is uh, 150 fish. 150 fish total in the lake. That's the population of fish. By the way, that means 50 out of the 150 were tagged. 33% of the fish are tagged, and when I went out there and caught my 12 fish, 33% of my fish were tagged. Same proportion of tagged fish, right? You guys don't seem like you like fishing. Um, okay. Or maybe you just don't like experimenting on the fish in such a way. Um, but you can find populations or estimate populations like that. Uh, okay, check this out. 2.2. Um, <clears throat> So, 2.2 is to me, a very, uh, the homework is, list is, is shorter. It's kind of a minor little section. Um, I, I'm, so, it's going to take me five minutes to talk about this. I, I, it's just a few problems. That, what they do is they do what's called a scatter plot. And you might have heard that word a little bit in chapter one. I never mentioned it too much, but it's when you take the data, you gather some data, and you plot it on a, on a graph. So maybe, I mean, maybe I could list some data for you. <clears throat> uh, you know, and, and then I could plot them, or, or maybe they don't even list them. Maybe they just show you the plot, okay? But, but what it is, is it's, it's points that are plotted. And then the question is, is the data linear? And so you just kind of look at the graph and you kind of look, well, uh, yeah, looks like if I, I could draw a line through that data. So yes, the data is linear. Are you following me? It's just very visual. The idea is the scatter plot is the data linear. So, so I would say, yes, it's linear. Um, <clears throat> And not only that, then they might also say this. At, maybe after it's linear, or maybe a different question, they say, is it, uh, hang on, let me, let me just clear this up for you. Is it linear? That's one question. And then the next question, is it, a, is it exactly linear? They kind of want to know, is it exact or approximate? <clears throat> is it exact or approximate? Um, so, what's the answer to this? Is it linear? The 
sure looks like it. It sure, yes, it sure looks like it. Um, is it exact or approximate? I, you know, to me, it looks exact. It looks exact. Um, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> and so I could check this. Remember, what, the thing, one thing we said about linear is that to be a perfectly linear function, it has to have the same slope always. Watch this. What's the change in x? Change in x, change in x. The change in x looks like a consistent one. And what's the change in y? Three, three, three. three. Well, that's a perfectly linear, yeah, that's a line with a slope of three. Uh, the data, I mean, when I get to see the data, I can really tell it is exact. Even the picture, though, I could sort of tell it looked exact. So I'm gonna say it's exact. It's exactly a linear set of data. The, da the data is linear and it's exact. You know, here's another one. <clears throat> you know, this is linear, but just quickly, you would say, yeah, that's linear. I mean, it is linear. You'd call that linear, but is it exact? No, there's a couple pieces of data that are a little off, right? So that would be an approximate set of data. But I call it linear. Um, here's one. <clears throat> Would you call that linear? No, please don't. Uh, <clears throat> if you tried to draw something, uh, a curve through that data, <laughs> it would be a curve. It would not be a line, right? It would, you could, I mean, and we'll, again, as the semester goes, we'll study curves, okay? We're gonna study curvy functions. We're still kind of stuck on lines here a little bit, but uh, uh, that, uh, so so that's it. That's two two six or five or six questions looking at some data, linear or not, uh, exact or approximate. Uh, yeah, pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> you're not really doing anything with the data. You're not really doing any calculations. I don't think. All right, good. Well, let's uh, let's keep talking. Listen, this is what I was thought. I thought I could get go through this two one and two two kind of quickly. The, the, to me, the big chunk and perhaps 60, 70 percent of your test uh, is is sort of two three. Okay, that's kind of where this where all the good questions are. Um, and so let's get a start on that. We'll, we'll we'll do more good word problems and stuff next week, I think. Um, but here we go. If we go into two three. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> all of a sudden what we have is two equations and they're linear equations um, and I'm gonna you probably have done some of this before I'm gonna sort of act like you haven't I'm gonna kind of teach this to you like you haven't done this before uh, But we look at this, and it's it's called a system of equations, a system uh, of equations. And in this particular case, um, there's two equations, so it's a system of two equations. And if it's got two equations, then there's usually two variables. Two variables, two equations is a system of equations. Uh, we could do three equations, three variables. That's a system of equations. That gets a little worse. No, no, I don't think our book is doing that to me here. Uh, we could do four equations, four variables. Okay, I don't think I'm doing that either in this book. Uh, you know, there is another algebra class after this class. This is college algebra. There's a pre-calculus algebra. That's some higher level algebra, and so we can. So some stuff is saved for that class. Uh, so I think in this class we'll do two equations, two unknowns, and you want to solve a system of equations. And the, the directions are solve this system of equations. Um, what would you do? Can you again? I kind of ask you to help me or tell me something. You don't. Sometimes you don't like to tell me anything, but you got an idea. I mean, just can you say something? You would, if you're helping your friend, you're helping your kid do this. What would you tell them? What would you say to do? You know? You know. Uh, 
I was hoping you would use the phrase, why don't you just set them equal to each other? That's kind of a phrase you've heard, right? Set them equal to each other. I mean, that's sort of a method. I'm writing it down like it's a method to help me solve this, but it's also, again, real common sense here. I mean, you wanna know, you're solving this system of equations. This equation is y. This equation is y. Why don't we set this y equal to this y? Why don't we set them equal to each other? So I'm setting this equation equal to this equation, again, because they both equal y. Are you following me? They both, I'm setting them equal to each other. I'm setting this y equal to this y. Now, you know what you, here, before you proceed, hang on just a second. I'm talking strategy a little bit here. I like to talk strategy. Here's another way to think what you just did. I said set them equal to each other, and that's sort of the way it was set up. That was the phrase that popped in my mind, and it makes sense. But this phrase also makes sense. Why don't you do substitution? Why don't you take this y and substitute it in for this y? Well, that's, that's, it's called substitution, and it sure is a hell of a lot like setting them equal to each other in, in this particular case. Uh, right. So that's sort of a second method there. I'm going to say substitution is sort of a different method, but it's, it sure seems similar. <clears throat> um, but anyway, here I am now, and I want to solve for x and for y, but, but what you do by substituting or by setting them equal to each other is you eliminate one of the variables, and now that allows you to solve, you know. Now you're into a, a situation like you were at the beginning of chapter two. You can solve this stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see, I'm gonna add the five over there. That'll be 34. I'm gonna subtract the five X. Subtract the five X would be negative three X. Divide by negative three. And this is a nasty little answer, but it's my answer. 34 thirds, negative 34 thirds. Beginning of chapter two helps me do this. Um, but now you're not finished. You know, when you solve a system of equations, you are looking for, the answer is this ordered pair, actually. The answer is uh, an X and a Y that satisfy both equations. <clears throat> uh, so now that I got X, I want to find the Y that goes with it. I mean, I've, I've sort of got half the answer. How, how do I get Y now? Plug your X back in. Please. Plug him back in, and that's a nice phrase. I, right. Plug this guy back in to either one of those original equations. We'll give you the same Y. Yep. Uh, I'll just go for that top equation there. Y equals 2 times this X uh, minus 5. Okay. Again, these numbers suck a little bit. Uh but I ain't scared of numbers. I don't know about you. I like all numbers. Uh, negative 68 over 3 is what you would do if you multiply that. Minus a 5, which is like a 15 over 3. I guess I just got a common denominator is what I did. Uh, so I guess that's negative 83 over 3. When I'm making up problems in class, this can happen. <laughs> weird numbers. They're not weird. They're cool. We should be able to have the mathematical maturity to handle any. It's just a number. They don't have to be twos and threes and fours as answers. Uh, your computer, your my math lab computer might still kind of think you're babies and they might still give you nice numbers. I don't know. So I presented this as, it's a system of two equations, two variables. Let's solve the system of two, two equations, two variables. And we, we kind of got a couple strategies. I got another strategy for you. Anyway, we did it. We did it, and there's our answer. And the answer is an ordered pair. It's an X and a Y. Listen, it's the X and the Y that satisfies both equations. There's only one. Listen, there is a lot of X's and Y's that satisfy that equation. You know, I can make a chart of X's and Y's that satisfy the top equation. I can make a chart of X's and Y's that satisfy the second equation. I mean, that's what it is when you plot points, you make those charts. I can make a chart that, I, there's a bunch of answers 
There's a bunch of x's and y's that satisfy the first equation. There's a bunch of x's and y's that satisfy the second equation. But there's only one x and y that satisfies both equations. And we found it. By the way, satisfying an equation means it makes it true. When you plug these numbers in, it's true. It's not false. Uh, <clears throat> The other way to look at this is, so this is the best way to do these problems, but I want to, you need to know this also, that behind the scenes here, uh, we could, uh, this is a line with a graph, and this is a line with a graph, and what we're really finding here is, uh, the point of intersection. These two lines probably cross each other at a certain point, and that's the point of intersection. And so, it is. And so, I can present this problem to you and give you a completely different looking set of directions. Instead of saying, solve the system of equations, I could say, find the point of intersection of these two lines. And guess what you would do? The same thing. And you do the same work. Find the point of intersection. Or solve the system of equations. It's the same thing. <clears throat> I want to graph it, though, and illustrate this for you. Uh, but graphing it is not a good method for solving, really, because how the hell do you think? I mean, am I going to draw an accurate enough graph to get this point? No. <laughs> but let's just check it out. Let's just check it out. If I try to do an accurate graph, what is this guy? He's a line. He's got a y-intercept of negative 5, and he's got a slope of 2 up to over 1. Uh, I'm kind of making this a mini version here. There it is. Uh, what about this other line? Uh, it's got a y-intercept of 29. Wow, if that's a 5, this is a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 29. A y-intercept of 29 and a slope of 5. Oh boy, up 5 over 1. I drew this line. Dude, I don't know how good I did. I just got a little wobbly right there. But that's my point of intersection. I see it. I wonder if it sort of looks like this. What the hell is this? This is uh, negative 10. No, it's not. It's negative uh, 11 and 1 third. Is that what this is? Mm -hmm. And negative... Uh, 27 and two-thirds. Two That's what that is. Let's see, does my point look accurate? Negative 11 and one-third. If that's a five, that's a five, 10, 11. Perfect, look at that. Perfect, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27 and two-thirds. Perfect, that's the X and the Y value of that point, right. I wouldn't do that, but it, it, you can't. Right? You don't really do these graphically. Your, your, your homework might try to ask you to. They might try to do it graphically, they would say. So you graph the lines and hopefully you see the point of intersection. If it's a nice point like 2, 4, you know, maybe you can see it. All right? If it's this kind of a point, you can't really see it. Uh, but you can roughly tell it's down there somewhere. <clears throat> Let's do another one, look. Um, I just made, here's another system of equation. I mean, it comes together. It's two equations, two variables, it's two lines, uh, and the question is solve the system of equation, or, or find the point of intersection of the two lines. I mean, I could say it either way, but you would proceed. Um, you know, I think the phrase set them equal to each other sort of fails us here just a little bit. I mean, when it was when he equaled y and he equaled y, setting them equal to each other made sense. Uh, this time, 
Uh, one of them equals y, the other one is just kind of mixed up there. Uh, so this time I really want to go with the, the second wording there. I want to go with what a substitution. It's, it seems very logical here on this one that I would grab this, which equals y, and I would substitute it into that other equation, don't you think? I mean, the way it was set up, that was the easiest route to take. We can, we can do a lot of different routes here, as long as you do legal algebra. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's do that. That's 4. I'm plugging that in. I'm, I'm substituting 7x plus 12 into there, uh, and now I have to solve an equation. I mean, again, this is why we were sort of practicing 2-1 to let, let us up here. i got to solve this equation. Um, <clears throat> 28x plus 48 minus 3x equals 8. Again, I might not have done a great job with, I didn't predict nice numbers maybe. Maybe I didn't do too bad. If I move that 48 over, it's a negative 40. If you divide by 25, am I doing this right? Negative 40 25ths. I would reduce it, I guess. Negative 8 fifths. make that a decimal in certain situations. I mean, whatever, it's a negative 1.6 is what it is. Uh, I think I did that. Did I do that right? And now what? Uh, oh, find y. And so how do you find y? You take that x and plug it back into either place, you know? You can plug that x in there and solve for this y. But this one's already solved for y, so it's nice to just plug that x in there. It's also nice to work with decimals instead of fractions, I think, for some of you, but you should be able to handle both. Uh, here I go. y equals seven times this negative eight fifths plus 12. So how you, you multiply your seven over one, you get negative 56 fifths, and you have to add 12, which is 12 over one, which is 60 over five, when you get a common denominator, that's a 12. And now you add that, and the answer is four fifths. It turns out that's actually 0.8. That would've been, so if I could've worked with the decimal version of this, I would've, should've got the decimal answer, whatever, whatever I wanna do. Uh, or I gotta read my directions on my homework. But, uh, but we got it. The answer is the ordered pair, negative eight fifths, comma, four fifths. <clears throat> Solving systems of equations. Um, I wanna do another one. <clears throat> and then, uh, so I'm glad we got into two, three here, but then, Next week, we'll get into the word problems. I mean, it, this is fun, but it's more fun to, to set up, to read a nice paragraph <laughs> of a word problem that makes me set up two equations. When I read the word problem, I'll probably have to set up two equations and solve a system of equations, you know? That, so that, that'll be the, the type of word problems we'll do will lead us to, to this. Let, let's do one more, though, and then we'll do the word problems next week. One more here would be this, look at this, uh, 3x uh, plus y equals 8, um, <clears throat> and uh, negative x plus 2y equals 3. So here's a system of equations, again, another system of two equations, two variables. Solve this system of equations, please. I can still do these methods. You know, in order to set them equal to each other, I kind of need y by itself, y by itself, and I set them equal to each other. So I could do that. It would take a little work, but I could do that. Hang on. I could solve just one of them for y and substitute it in for the other equation. That would be substitution by solving one of them for y, or x, by the way, and substituting it in. But there's this third method. The third method is called the elimination method. And it works, I'm going to use it this time uh, on this for, just to show you, and, and it works good sometimes, depending on how it's set up. The elimination method says you're allowed to add these equations together. <clears throat> you just add them up, add the x's, add the y's, add the numbers. You're, but you do, you add these equations in hopes 
that one of the variables will eliminate. If you add these equations right now, do any of the variables eliminate? No. So here's the other thing you're allowed to do. You're allowed to multiply any equation by any number you want, as long as you multiply through the entire equation. So, like maybe I should multiply this second equation by a three. Why did I say multiply it by a three? So it'll be a negative 3x, and then when I add it to the, to the other equation, I'll eliminate my x's. Right. So I'll do this. This is how we do the elimination method. And that, you know what, it, you guys are nodding. You've seen some of this stuff before, I think. Again, you're still, we're still at the beginning of this course where you might have seen some of this. Here I go, though. I'm moving over here. You know, this elimination method sort of takes a little more writing. I got to kind of rewrite the top equation rewrite the top equation, and then multiply this entire equation by 3, negative 3x, positive 6y, and 9. You guys cool? Now you add these equations. The x's eliminate like we manipulated it to do, and we get a 7y equals 17, and we can easily find y. Uh, y is 17 sevenths. We're still only half done. We need x. And how do we get x? Plug oh, yeah. Plug this y. You know, I, what I could do, I could start over and do another elimination. And what would I eliminate? Wait a minute. Yeah, try to eliminate the y's, and that would help me find x. But once you got one, you tend to just want to go substitute them in to get the other one, I think. I think I'll just back substitute it in like you guys are saying. I'll go, uh, uh, I'll go up to that top equation. I'll do 3x plus 17 sevenths equals 8. Oh my god. I'm subtracting a fraction. Uh, that's an 8 over 1 minus a 17 over 7. I need a common denominator of 7. 56 sevenths, 56 sevenths minus 17 sevenths is 39 sevenths. 39 sevenths is over there. What's over here? 3x. So one more move. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Or you could say multiply by 1 third. Um, you know, when you do multiply by 1 third or divide by 3, the 3 cancels with the 39, and this answer is 13 sevenths. Woo Our answer is 13 sevenths comma 17 sevenths. And we did the elimination method. I got just one or two quick things to say, and then I am going to quit. So there's more to section 2-3, especially with the word problems and stuff. But also what happens to you in 2-3 is some weird things can happen. When you're solving a system of equations, you've seen all my examples I did today. I did three just now, I guess. Uh, I got an answer. I got an answer, which is called a unique solution. So that happens most of the, that's, that happens most of the time. But some funny things can happen. During the process of eliminating or substituting or any of these, what, one thing that could happen is everything cancels out Everything cancels out. You get like a statement like this. Zero equals zero. Or maybe two equals two. So it's weird. All the x's cancel out and you end up with a true statement of some sort. Well, that means... That means it was a dependent system of equations. It really means they were the same damn equation is what it means. They were, and if you graphed them, they were the same dang line is kind of what it means. There's a lot of words for this scenario, but if this happens to you, I want to say it's infinitely many solutions, is what they would say. Infinitely many solutions. Hang on. Another word they would say is it's a dependent system of equations. I want to say, this is me talking. It's the same dang line.
So if in the process of working, all your x's leave and you end up with zero equals zero or two equals two, if it's a true statement, then this is what's the, you, you, you had a dependent system of equations. They were really the same damn equations for what they were. Here's another scenario though, watch this, one more. <clears throat> you get a false statement. You do the work, somehow those x's eliminate and you get like zero equals eight or some false statement. Then that means <clears throat> there's no solution. I mean, uh, there's no solution. I think the book likes to use the word inconsistent set of equations. Inconsistent set of equations. There's no solution. But graphically, how do two lines never intersect? They're parallel, They're parallel lines is what it is. Gra that's what's going on. Yeah, they never intersected. There was no answer. They were parallel. Similar to this one where they're the same dang line, but these are actually the same dang line. These are not the same line, but they are parallel. So I'm gonna say, say that visually, this is parallel lines. So those are your three options when you're working here. You, you get an answer, you get this, or you get that. Uh, so that's good, we'll quit today. Before you run away, I'll share with you your test score, like I said.